In this video, we're going to create our first post model. And what this means is that we're going to be able to create, read, update, and destroy models. And we're going to call the model post. So imagine on YouTube, you create a video. You can also edit the video. You can watch the video and you can update the video. I mean, you can delete the video. It's the same concept. It's called CRUD, C-R-U-D. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to stop my Rails server and I'm going to run a new command. So I'll just make it bigger for you. It's in the bottom right, by the way. Okay, so the command I'm going to run is called Rails G Scaffold. What this command does is generate a scaffold. The G stands for generate and every Rails command starts with the Rails and scaffold is what we're going to create. So Rails G Scaffold, then we have the name of the scaffold. So I'm going to call it post. So post. And then we're going to give the post a title because every YouTube video has a title. So we'll say title. And then we also have to specify what type is the title. Is it an integer? Is it a string? Is it a Boolean? And of course, with a title, we'll be working with a string. So we do colon and then string. Every YouTube video also has a description. So we're going to add description and then we're going to say string. Okay, so that's all we need for now. If we hit enter, then it will run a command. So that's our first command, apart from the Rails S to start the server. Okay, so as you can see, it created a bunch of files. This is why Rails is so good. It's, it just it makes it faster to develop. So what we're going to do now is run a command called Rails DB Migrate. And the reason that we're going to run this command is because let's go to the DB folder and then let's go to Migrate. And as you can see, this is one of the files that was just created. It says create table posts. So what this is going to do is go into our database and it's going to create the table called posts. Each post is going to have a title and a description. So if we run another command called Rails DB migrate, then this is going to actually be migrated into the database and we'll be able to work with this as a field or as data. So I'm going to run this command Rails space DB colon migrate. So hit the enter key to run the command and then this will create a new file because it's our first migration. And this is called the schema.rb. This file houses the kind of structure of our database. So it doesn't hold so it doesn't house the actual data of our database, but it holds what it would look like. So it has the post table with a title, a description, and a created app and an updated app. So that's the so that's the schema.rb. It just houses the structure of the database and what it looks like. So now let's go to app views and let's go to posts. All of these files in the post folder were just created. This is what we call the views. The views are what the user interacts with. Rails is what we call an MVC framework, model view controller. As you can see, the views are here. So they're in the views folder. Controller, they control the backend. They control what happens in the application. So if the view count needs to be increased by one, then that happens in the controller. The views, the views render all of the content. And then the model is kind of like what stores the content. It's kind of like what represents the content. So as I said, all of these files were just created. These files are what the user is going to see. Now, these files are a little bit different to HTML files because at the end, it says .erb. This stands for embedded Ruby. And what it means is that we can use the Ruby programming language inside of these files. It's really cool and it's really exciting. So we understand a little bit about that. And what I'm going to do is run the Rails S again so that I can actually interact with my application. S stands for server. So we're gonna run the Rails server. And we're still on the home screen, but what we want to do is to make it so that the home screen of our application, i.e. the domain, is actually going to point to this index.html.erb. So to do that, what we have to do is go to config, the config folder, and then go to roots.rb. This is the place where we define the roots of our application. So as you can see in the comment here, we comment with a hashtag. It says defines the root path, and all we have to do is type root. So I'm gonna uncomment this, and then I'm gonna say posts, hashtag index. So you're probably thinking, what the hell, what's going on? Well, remember that we created a post scaffold. So that's where the post part is coming from. And then the index is where we wanted to point to. But when we're using the root function, what it actually means is that it's pointing to the app controllers and then the post controller and then the index action of this post controller. This index action corresponds to the index view of the post folder in the views folder. I'll just say that again because it gets a little bit complicated. So the config roots, this root, root posts index, corresponds and points to the posts controller. And then the index action, this is called an action, this is also called a method, which corresponds to the index.html.erb file 
in the posts folder in the views folder. So now if we save this file and we save that, we should get something different. What do we get? Okay, so we get something different and it says posts, new posts. And now we can create a post. I'm gonna call it bang bang. We're gonna say my new and first post, create post. Okay, post was successfully created. Back to posts, damn, it's there. This is really cool, isn't it? I can edit the post, I can get rid of that. My new post, update post. And as you can see, post was successfully updated. If I destroy this post, it means deleted. So now the post is deleted, it's gone. So as you can see, Ruby on Rails is really powerful because already we have something that kind of resembles a YouTube layout. Anyone can see these posts. If I log on in a different browser, anyone could see these posts because they go into the database and then they're served to everyone who uses the application. So now our new post is created and that's really cool. Okay, so I just want to go over what we just did there to make sure that you understand. So first of all, we created a scaffold and you can think of a scaffold as a way to interact with a model. So we can create a model, we can update the model, we can read the model and we can destroy the model. In this case, we called it post. And in the config roots.rb, we're just pointing that the root of the application, i.e. when there's no slashes and it's just the root of the domain, or corresponds to the post hashtag index. What that means is that it goes to the controllers folder and then it finds the post controller and goes to the index method. So that's all well and good and it renders this method and this method corresponds to the index.html.erb folder file in the views folder so we go to posts and then index.html.erb just to make sure that this is the file that is being rendered if we got rid of this line what it should do is that it should get rid of this link right here so i'll save the file and then refresh and as you can see it's gone because we commented it out okay so that's an example of commenting but i want it so I'm happy that we managed to figure all of that out. But what I want to do now is to create a navbar and create a footer. So on websites, we have navbars and we have footers. And with Ruby on Rails, what you can do is you can create what's called a layout or a partial. And then you can render that partial on every single page that needs that navbar or footer. And now I'm going to give you an example of this. So let's go into the layouts folder and let's create a new file called underscore because every partial starts with an underscore. And let's call it navbar html.erb in this file i'm going to say hello this is my navbar then what i'm going to do is go to application.html.erb it's in the same folder this file is also very interesting it's something that you have to understand this file is the file that renders every other page in the application so anything i do here will be mimicked on any page in the whole website what that means is that if i say to render the navbar file if i say to render it on this page it will show up on every single page so i don't have to copy the same code everywhere so i'll show you an example of this let's say new line and let's say embedded ruby sign with an equal sign to show that it's rendering let's say render layouts slash navbar and then hit save and then refresh and as you can see our navbar is there just to, show you, just to show you something, I want to get rid of this equal sign in the embedded Ruby, and then let's save and refresh. And as you can see, it doesn't show up. And what that means is that you need to put the equal sign in order to render the content inside of the embedded Ruby. So let's make sure that the equal sign is there. That's a, a mistake that we'll all make. Just to show you that the navbar is being rendered on every single page, if I try and do anything in my application on the pages that we already have, and I do this, my navbar is still there and it's not going anywhere. Okay, so that's really cool. Now what I'm gonna do is the same thing for the footer to make sure that you understand. So what did we do? We went to layouts and we created a new file called underscore footer.html.arb. And then what I'm gonna do is say, hello, this is my, this is my footer. Save and refresh and nothing's gonna happen. And that's because we need to render it in the application.html.arb file. So let's go here and let's copy and paste this line underneath the yield tag. And I'll show you why we do that in just a second. So then let's change it to footer, save and refresh. And as you can see, it says, hello, this is my footer. Now just to get on on why we put it underneath the yield sign is because this yield sign represents all of the other pages that we're going to render in our application. So if we want to render the index page, it goes inside of the yield sign. So we want the footer to be below the page because we want it to be on the bottom. So we want it to be below all of the content 
and that's why we render it underneath the yield sign. It's the same thing with the nav bar, that's why we render it over the yield sign because we want it to be on the top. If I'm going a bit fast, just slow down the video and watch it again. Okay, so I don't want to spend this video just styling the nav bar and doing things like that because I'm here to teach you Ruby on Rails, not CSS or HTML. I recommend watching a different course on those things. So what I'm gonna do is just copy and paste code from another project that I have. And then you can just copy and paste the code on GitHub because that's where you can find this project. I'll have a link to it in the description. Okay, so I'm just gonna go to this project and I'm just gonna copy and paste the code in there that I already have. So I'm gonna go to app views, layouts and then i'll just copy and paste it into the nav bar and then i'll do the same thing with the footer i'll probably get some errors and the reason that i'm getting errors is because it uses functions that we don't currently have in our application because this is the finished nav bar so what i'm going to do is just comment these out and you should do the same so just comment out anything that has embedded ruby because we don't have access to much in our application so just comment it out by adding a hashtag um and after you've done that, you won't get any errors. And I'll just make sure to put both of these files in the description just to make sure that you have them. And the reason that it looks so bad is because we need to install Tailwind CSS. Tailwind CSS is a CSS framework that is gonna make it a lot easier for us to create our application and make it look decent. So let's go to tailwindcss.org, tailwindcss.com. And then let's get started. Now in this course, I'm just going to use the play CDN because that's a lot faster, but I recommend actually installing it and watching a video, but you don't have to do it for this course. So don't worry about it. So copy and paste this script tag and then go to application.html.erb. Then we're just going to go to the head of our application and I'm just going to copy and paste in the script tag. Once I've done that, it should actually load. And as you can see, it does. And our application looks a lot better with a proper nav bar and a proper footer, not YouTube. I'm very creative, aren't I? And so that's it. Okay, so so far we have a navbar, we have a footer, and we also have the ability to create and delete posts. I just realized that I want my footer to be fixed to the bottom, and so what I'm going to do is just say position fixed left zero bottom zero. And now it should be fixed to our screen, but it is, and I am just need to say width 100%. So say width 100%. The next thing that we want to do is to make a feature so that our users can sign up and sign in. This is a really important feature. Okay, so to do this, we're going to use a gem. And a gem is like a package that we can use to help build our application. And the website that we use is called rubygems.org. As you can see, it's gonna say, find, install, and publish Ruby gems. It's a publish your gems and install them. And essentially, it's like Node.js package manager. And they're just libraries, programming libraries that help you to build your website. So we're gonna search up device. Now, Devise is a flexible authentication solution. It has 160 million downloads, so it's quite popular. And we're going to install it. So click on it. And then we're going to cop copy this. And we're going to go to the gem file. Now, I haven't talked to you about the gem file yet, but I'm going to teach you about it now. So this is the gem file. It's in the root of your application. And then here we have all of our gems. Gems are the packages. I just said that. And then, so all we have to do is just put in gem device and then run the command and then device will be installed. At least that's what I'd hope. For now, what I'm gonna do is just get rid of all of the comments because it looks ugly and we don't need these comments. So just get rid of all the green or whatever color the comments are in your editor. And then just before where it says group development test do, I'm gonna say hashtag because they commented out and I'm gonna say my gems. And then I'm gonna copy and paste the vias under here. This isn't a requirement. It's just something to help you keep track of what gems that you've installed and what were previously installed by the system. Okay, so now we have device installed. We know what gems are. We know what Ruby gems is. We're all good. So all we have to do is stop the server and we need to run a command called bundle install. Now what this command does, so bundle install, I'll just make it bigger so you can see. Sorry about that. Bundle install. This command it just installs what's ever in your gem file. By doing this command, it'll give you access to the libraries that are actually in your gem file. So let's hit enter. Okay, and as you can see, it says bundle complete, 17 gem file dependencies, 79 gems and now installed. Quite a lot, isn't it? Rails is a whole package. Anyway, now what we want to do is go to the device documentation. Documentation is a really important thing that you should probably get familiar with. In fact, I don't want to go to this one. I want to go to their homepage. 
Sometimes it's documentation, sometimes it's homepage, but we want to go to the homepage. Okay. Then I'm just going to scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. And as you can see, it says to get started, you just add the gem, and then you run the command. We haven't run the command yet, so let's run the command. So it says Rails generate device install. So I'm going to copy and paste that into my terminal and hit enter. Okay, now it's given us a list of things that we have to do in order to work with device. First, it says ensure you have defined default URL options in your environment's file. Basically, we have to do that. So let's copy and paste this line and go to development.rb. And this is just changing how we want to mail our users, but it doesn't really matter. So go to development.rb and then add that line and sit and save the file. Then it says, ensure you have defined root URL to something in your config.roots.rb. Well, let's see, uh, have we done that? Config roots.rb and it says root post hashtag index. So yes, we have done this. So that one is ticked off. Next, it says, ensure you have flash messages in your application.html.drb. This is really helpful for debugging our application. It's going to say, like, you have successfully signed up, and that's what the flash messages are. So let's add this to our application.html.drb. So go to app, and then to views, and then to layouts, and then to application.html.drb. And I'm going to add it just below the navbar. Okay, once you've done that, we just have to run one more command, and that's called Rails G Devise Views. We talked about what the views we talked about what views were earlier. Views are what the user interacts with and what they see when they go into your website. So what this means is that we're going to be access we're going to be able to access what the user sees when they actually see to the sign up field and the registration login and all that. So there's just a few more steps before we have authentication uh, integrated into our application. And I'm just going to run the command rails g device, and then we're going to call it user. This is what it's commonly called. It's usually called a user. And this is the model that we're going to use with device. Next, we're just going to run our final command, and this is rails db migrate. I hope you remember what this command does, but what it does is just update the schema.rb, which is the representation of the database. It means that we can actually use what we want to use. And as you can see, the schema.rb was changed, and now we have the users table in the schema.rb. So then, now let's run Rails S, and let's see what happened to our application. Okay, so nothing happened to our application, but what I want to do is go to views and go to our navbar. Because in our navbar, we had links to like sign up in our application, and we want to uncomment them. So what I'm going to do is say, now we can actually uncomment if current user, and then I'm going to say uncomment that one, and then uncomment, actually don't uncomment that one, uncomment the logout button, and uncomment the sign up button, and then uncomment the end button. So now I could save, and, and we should see something. So now we have access to this sign up button and that's because of this link right here. It says link to sign up new user registration path. If we follow this link and click on it, it takes us to this. And as you can see, we have three fields and uh, we can actually sign up. So I'm going to sign up and say test at gmail.com. Then a password of one, two, three, four, five, six and one, two, three, four, five, six for the confirmation. I hit sign up. Okay. So it says you welcome. You have signed up successfully. That's amazing. Now that I've signed up, I have access to this upload button and I can actually upload a post. So that's really cool. This is going well. And then I can also log out at any time and it works. Now, unfortunately, our sign up form and our login form do not look very nice. They look very bare bones. And so I want to actually improve them with some styling. But again, I'm not here to teach you HTML or CSS. So I'm going to copy and paste some styles that I already have from another application. You can find the code on GitHub if you want to just copy and paste. So I'm just going to copy and paste this in and it looks like that. And then I'm just going to copy and paste the sessions in into the sessions and it looks like that. So that's immediately much nicer to look at. So that's great. What I did was I just changed the contents of the new in the registrations folder and changed the contents of the sessions in the sessions folder. So in this video, we created our first post scaffold. We added the vise and we added the footer and the navbar as well. 